tech tech technically speaking welcome to yet another edition of technically speaking technically speaking i am your host just nick i'm tat wizard and it is episode five tat it is the fifth episode i'm excited about this one because it involves two things i love music and yes. tech Yes. And we'd like to welcome our special guest who's here with us today. We have Richard uh, Shea, who's the global business development lead for Google and creator of Breakbeat Code. Welcome. Thank you very much. That's we also have Calvin Penny, who is a uh, select strategic accounts, also field sales representative, Google Cloud co-founder of Breakbeat Code. And you've hosted a TEDx talk on teaching coding with music. I sure did. Thanks That's for having awesome. Me. Yeah, we might get into that, too. So let's just start off with Breakbeat Code. What is Breakbeat Code? Yeah. So Breakbeat Code is started off as a 20 percent time project at Google. So 20% time at Google, that means that Google employees like Calvin and I can go create new innovative things that we think could have a big impact. But it's super early days. Like It's not like uh, we're not clear where it's going yet. And uh, Gmail started off that way. So we created this thing called Breakbeat Code. And the whole idea was to teach coding through music production. So what we were trying to do is reach students that didn't necessarily identify as programmers. So we were looking particularly at historically underserved communities, starting off here in New York. So black and Latino students, and just generally speaking, women. Because diversity in tech, we know, is a huge, huge mm -hmm. problem. And so we looked at a way to say, how can we, to, until now, maybe this traditional coding curriculum just didn't work for them. And so we create Breakbeat Code. The students use something called EarSketch. It's a platform from Georgia Tech. And so if you have any music production experience, you've seen like music producers like Pharrell, Crate, they normally have something called a DAW. It's like digital audio workstation. So that means they're dragging and dropping different beats. And so these students at Breakbeat Code, they're doing the same thing. They're just writing code to do it. Mm. So you make music through coding. Yeah. I'm interested in knowing how that works exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this team at Georgia Tech had worked it out that if you basically take what is that normal digital audio workstation, they call it a DAW, mm -hmm. and basically you connect to it using something called an API, very similar to what you see on like Google Maps, like on a website. You know, someone like Yelp, for example, mm -hmm. we're kind of getting the weeds, but I know you're that audience, right? Mm -hmm. So like when Yelp is, says, okay, I want a Google map on our website, it's doing something called an API call. So it's sending information out and it's getting back that map. Same thing here. They're writing some code to send some information to this DAW to say like, I want this beat on this track, starting on measure one, ending on measure 20, and it just works. And so... This team at Georgia Tech created this platform. They started working with like Alicia Keys and Common and Pharrell and all these artists. And those artists just gave away their beats. So instead of these students like just making up like generic sounds, they're like remixing real music tracks. And it's really awesome. They get super excited. So like in first 30 minutes of our first workshop, students with zero experience coding, zero experience with music are remixing music. Is it, is it yeah. prompt-based or is it a language? That is a great question. It's using Python, which is like one of the most popular programming languages in the world. Right. Yeah. And so and so they're just writing. So like if you look at YouTube, behind the scenes of YouTube, that's Python. Mm -hmm. NASA, when they're like sending rockets up, a lot of stuff behind the scenes is Python. Data science, machine learning, it's all Python code. And so they're using like a really like awesome skill, like learning Python. Yeah. And they're just using that skill they just learned to make music. This is pretty revolutionary. Okay, so I'm speaking to all the music producers out there, like myself, so I, I produce in my spare time as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And you may be familiar with programs like Fruity Loops, Logic. So then you're working with this program that you literally are typing in a code yeah. and it can produce a track for you. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And actually, Calvin, you start off with Fruity yeah. That's what I'm saying. Day, you got right? my attention when you said Fruity Loops because that that's the connection I make to the students. Is like when I started um, like beat making, that was one of the tools that I use. I use Fruity Loops, but then to to do something like fun like this, to where you're coding and you're getting the result, I was like, wait a minute, like yeah, this is this is so dope. Like we need to take this beyond just the setting that we're in, you know. So um, 
Yeah, Fruity Loops, Ableton. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. those, those are the, those are the mm-hmm. go-tos. Right, yep, yep. So literally you can just type in a code and I can have like a, a track with just 808s yeah, playing. Exactly. exactly. So like great question. So you can filter on, I want um, hip hop, I want EDM, I want gospel. Wow. Like you can filter on the type of beats you want to hear. Nice. You can filter on the artist, figure that out. And we could teach you in less than 30 minutes how to do it. That's Which dope. we should do. For yes, sure. yes, we should. So yeah. I guess, all right, if you, once you get into it, right, and you find the beat structure you like, mm-hmm. right, you can then just keep that code in your notes and always come back to it when you want to build a new beat a different way. Yeah, totally. And so, and so it's reusable code. So, yeah. yeah. And so the team at Georgia Tech, they, they worked it out so that everything's automatically saved. And so students just create an account and then they can just come back to it later and then they can create a copy, remix that. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, That's and they cool. get super excited as soon as they start to hear their their beats playing. And so we do these hackathons, mm-hmm. and at the end of the hackathon, we get like a live DJ. So the kids have written some music in like let's say about an hour, publish it, like just download as MP3, and then twenty minutes later the DJ's remix it and calling them out. It's it's pretty awesome. It's, they get super excited. Yeah, that's. I mean, remixes are popular right now. They're in, so you definitely yeah. want somebody to remix your stuff. I'm more wanting to focus on the coding part, yeah. which is because everybody, I feel like, should learn it at some point. But you also have AI now that mm-hmm. Tad and I was talking about not that long ago, which is kind of like trying to take over the whole needing to know the coding aspect. Well, well I think, and, and you guys tell me, right? Mm-hmm. I think the great part with AI is you have something that can check your code and take out all the bugs, Mm. right? So then if, do well, that leads me to another question. Do you get bugs in the beats? Yeah, you do. You you get bugs. And that's one of the reasons we call it breakbeat code. Yeah. And so in California. Okay, well, for those who's not super techie, what do you mean bugs? Like So when you code (laughs) and you accidentally put a period somewhere or a comma and you run the code, just like in a website, it could jam up everything. And so you have yeah. to go through and find that in order to, for it to run perfectly. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And so going back to that NASA example, like way back in the day, there have been projects, tens of millions of dollars that have been lost in space. Like the satellites don't work anymore because someone put a semicolon mm-hmm. in the wrong spot or forgot oh, a wow. semicolon. So that's what creates a bug. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. But with this, at least it's a low risk. We're not yeah. losing like rocket ships and satellites, right? right? <laughs> right. But the thing is, is that um, we call it break beat code. The big thing with the philosophy behind it is that you break code, it's easier for you to learn. Because in traditional education, right, mm. you make mistakes, you automatically feel like, oh, well, um, this isn't for me, right? But the thing is, with the students and the people that we're working with, especially when you're learning something new, making mistakes in coding is okay, right? Because mm-hmm. that's feedback. So we talk about we, the way we frame it with the with, with how we teach people. It's like, hey, this is feedback. So you could go ahead and you could make your, your code tighter. You could make it better. And uh, same thing with making music, right? Like the first time you try to, like, if you're making beats, that sound might not be right. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you try it out with something else. You know, you that that's how you start to, to learn from you know your mistakes. So that's right. that's the whole the the whole essence behind breakbeat code. And of course, you got breakbeat, which is relatable to music. Right? I was gonna so, ask that. Yeah. I was like, was this based off of hip hop? Like, are you guys trying to generate a new generation of boom bap? <laughs> but I get the whole breakbeat code with the bugs and all of that stuff. It makes yeah. sense. Well, I do have a question. Yep. When it when you get a bug, does it? Just stop it, or does it make a funny sound? Mm. That's a really good question. So, like Calvin was just alluding to, like, sometimes when you're making music, just with traditional music technology, sometimes it just doesn't work, it looks terrible, or sometimes it creates, like, this beautiful mess, mm-hmm. right? Like, a lot of, like, great music has been For a sure. mistake yeah, in some ways. Way. And so sometimes it'll just break, right? You know, so sometimes you, like, create a loop and it'll just be an infinite loop and it'll just crash and other times you're like what well, that's not what i intended but that is objectively dope <laughs> and it just works musically so it's kind of it's fun because it's actually that's true of coding like there's some mistakes that have been made that actually turned into be really awesome projects yeah yeah video games like the first uh, hacks of video games the first cheat codes that was a that was a bug right and they For stumbled sure. upon it and then that became a thing you know yeah. it's a huge thing right now yeah. so what made you want to focus on teaching kids to code 
Yeah. So, um, so when I first, um, when I, so way back in the day, so 2017, um, and it was just me learning Python for the first time. I used to be a school teacher all the way back in the day. Nice. I lived overseas for a while and I came back and I started volunteering in New York. And so we went into like, like citizen schools and all these organizations and, and then you get to see firsthand like the divide, right? So some yeah. schools just like they're historically are in underserved communities. They don't get like computer science education necessarily. They don't get music education. And so I uh, said, like, that's meaningful to me. And then uh, I was teaching myself Python for no particular reason. I was just curious. And I was listening to Black Sheep. Okay. Choice of yours. Choice is yours. Remember that? Remember yeah. the beginning of Black Sheep? And when it drops yes. in, this and that. Yes. This kind of sounds like if this, Engine. then that. I'm like, has anyone taught coding with music production or hip hop? <clears throat> and I looked up, found ear sketch. And so first thing I learned though, is students don't necessarily want to make hip hop, right? It's like they're all over the map. So it, often it's like mashups, right? right? It's like closer to Old Town Road than it is to like, you know, 90s hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, or they just go off and create like, you know, sounds for like soundtracks of video games they just they do whatever they want yeah so we find it actually that it started off with hip-hop and then became like way bigger especially like um, when calvin when he joined i was like in a single person classroom and then calvin's like he, he came in in 2020 and he's like actually i think there's a much bigger opportunity here so yeah so Cal calvin helped me think way bigger you know nice. way broader yeah nice. well let's get into the breakbeat code hackathon Tell us about this. When does this start? How can people be involved? We have a session where we have a live instructor, and then you have many students actually. They're they're virtual or they're you know live in person, and you know we run through the basics of uh, coding, right? So we talk about variables, functions. Um, we don't get into loops, but the main the main gist of it is is and then the next thing too we, we go through uh, music theory, right? So we talk about um, you know how many beats per minute. And right. we, we try to incorporate that artistic side to it awesome. right? Right. because one thing that I got inspired with with this type of um, curriculum or this education is right is that it not only is engaging the left side of your brain with right. logical thinking it's engaging the right side right I love that so I feel yeah. like that's where the magic happens yeah right so that's why um, you know we've been partnering with artists to um, to do this and also partner with uh, entrepreneurs because one of the biggest things for Brave Beat Code is we want to teach and inspire students to become the next future business leaders entrepreneurs and and um and tech leaders right mm -hmm. so who are um, some of the artists that's working with you guys well we got supernatural coming up nice, nice. yeah legendary the legendary the legendary off the top of his head big time unbelievable so yeah. he did an event with us in new york um going back about six weeks ago and he's like what's the next one right yeah. and so with the first event he did he had all the students they, they wrote their code we started remixing their beats that they made and he's like, okay, get your laptops, right? And then Google an image, right? And then everyone Googles image. And then he just picks up their laptop in mid-flow and, like, works in the image into yeah. his rhyme. Wow. Yeah. Oh, kids were nice. going nuts. Yeah. And so he's coming back on the December 16th, and nice. he's going to he's gonna do a, another one. But, like, I'll, I'll save the surprise, but he's going to do some really cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, so it's December 16th, 11 to 3 p.m. So it's a live stream event that we're going to be doing. Where's it going to be at? Yes, yeah, so we're going to be uh, the the in person events at Google New York, and then most of the audience they'll be joining us uh, live stream. So actually, they're uh, with Hot ninety seven. They can go to breakbeatco.de slash hot ninety seven, and we're going to have that's they can register for the event, and then it's free for everyone to attend, and then they'll be able to join live uh and see the whole show and actually participate and like you know code online and have coaches like participating and helping them online yeah we're all excited so where do wbls listeners go to sign up for breakbeat hackathon yeah so that they can go to breakbeatco.de slash wbls I'd love to hear what they come up with and maybe even potentially get some stuff from y'all that we can play for artists for the freestyles, for Funk Flex Freestyles. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah we love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. And then break the news like, hey, this beat was made through coding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that's love crazy. It. Never guess. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, that's awesome. So love how many idea. people are you expecting to attend this? Yeah, so in person we'll have about 100 students. Online we're hoping for thousands. 
technology, man. This yeah. is why we yeah. do this. Yeah, I mean, STEM, um, science, technology, <coughs> engineering, and math, that is the curriculum. And I think um, I don't see how kids don't go forward in the future without a heavy STEM curriculum right mm-hmm. i mean am i wrong mm-hmm. like totally it's it's, it's like not a, going backwards it's only going to get more progressive yeah and it's coming back to your question around gen ai like do we even need to code anymore and i, I think it's like sort of like do you need to know math if we have calculators it's kind of similar concept. Right. you still right. need the fundamentals you still need yeah. to know how it works under the hood yeah. to be really effective and i think the big difference now going forward is with that background in coding instead of like spending 10 years like just hunching over a keyboard, hoping for your promotion. It's just like, why don't you just cut to the chase and start your own company, mm. right? And so now instead of you having to eventually hire 100 engineers, you're just like, I got an idea. I got enough coding knowledge. I'm just going to create it on my own. And then I got a, I got an infinite number of engineers to get started. Well, can we go through a list of all the things that require coding for some who's like, you know, I don't even know what coding is. Because yeah. a lot of what we do with this podcast is to inform the people mm-hmm. who don't already yeah. know about technology. And then for the people who are, you know, experts at it to give them some more information. But for those who are like, I don't even know what coding is. Like, you guys keep saying this word. What do you yeah. use coding for? Yeah. You look at any app you use, that's code. If you look at that, you know, if someone orders a, a pizza and it gets delivered to your door on Seamless, that all sorts of code had to happen in the background. Personal websites. Personal websites, yeah. like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, there's all code behind the scenes. And it's sort of like another way to think about it. Let's say I, I want someone to build me a house, right? I, I'm going to say like, okay, I'm going to give you instructions of what I want to see. This is how I want to see it. This is the type of wood I want. This is the size. This is the dimensions. This is where I want my kitchen. Yeah. Similar, a coder is going to say like, this is they'll, this is how they think through it. They're like, okay, this is my website. I want to see this button there. I want to see this form over here. I'm going to put my video there. I want my users to be able to chat over here. And they've got this standard way mm-hmm. that computers understand to say like, Okay, I, I, you've given me these instructions. You've given it to me in a way I understand. And now I'm going to create your website. That's a way to think about it as well. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. We just had an episode where we talked about automation and uh, UBI and all of this stuff. So you guys are already given solutions to even if UBI comes into effect and automation comes in and, and you don't learn AI to use it and it's somebody else does and now they have your job or whatever the case is you now have another lane to build off of Mm -hmm. to create your own medium of income tat literally we just posted a video Mm -hmm. of the virtual doctor that is all ai yes and Mm -hmm. you literally wouldn't have to go to a doctor's office it's going to diagnose you give you the treatment all through an app which is like we're here like whether you guys want to accept it or not, this is where we are and where we're going. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and apparently that's just one, right, Calvin? There's there's other uh, AI. Uh, yeah, so at Google, we have MedPalm 2 right. that passed the doctor's board test. Wow. The, the last model was up to 85%. That's crazy. That's, you know, which yeah. is pretty advanced. Yes. To the point where you think about it naturally, if something's wrong with me or I have some type of sickness, what people do, they just Google it, right? Yeah. Right. But now we have these large language models that you have, like, um, you know, hospital systems and you have company, you know, people in the healthcare system around here that use these models to definitely help people if they have questions around um, a family member that's going through um, through cancer to kind of figure out like how to help support them in those situations. Um, but yeah, you know, it's still with, you know, we, we still need to think about how to do it in a responsible way because when it comes to like stuff like healthcare, you know, you definitely like to have a person involved, right? Yes. yes. So you don't want to automate it completely, but in some ways where it could help the clinician to reduce burnout, yeah. um, we, we could see some value in that, those areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, I think of it, I, when I think of it, just to Calvin's point, it's like if the doctor had enough time to sit with you and like actually have a conversation, like they're not like just going off to the next appointment. Like good bedside manner. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. And uh, instead of sitting there like not looking at you and just typing notes, but right. all that's just being automatically captured and they can just have a one-to-one conversation really listen to you. That's what I'm hoping to see from this technology in the future. That yes. it actually really helps your health too, because when you yeah. usually go to a doctor, unless you're just going on your well visit, 
you have something that you're concerned about. Yeah. And that when you're thinking about that concern, it kind of makes it worse. So when the doctor mm. comforts you, it kind of makes your body heal itself. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, I totally agree with that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so what are we saying in the long run? Don't get left out because mm. innovations are happening every day. And I love the fact that it is for the kids because you're teaching them. These are our next generation leaders. Mm. So get on top of it now. Yeah. Um, Break B code. We're going to have all of the information on how you can sign your kids up, how you can join virtually, and we'll make sure to update you with the link on how to, if you want to show up in person, attend this event. But I think it's revolutionary as someone who produces music. You know, I'm no Swiss beats, but um, just I'm Nick? interested in <laughs> Just please, just me. <laughs> but I myself personally would love to learn about how to code and make music at the same time. So we'll, we'll teach how to do it. Yeah, I'm Too down. Awesome. Put me, sign me up for a session. The whole thing about Break the Code, we're talking about creating artists, engineers, inspiring people, artists, engineers. Yes. I don't think, uh, I think gone are the days that you're going to be a creative artist without technology. Mm -hmm. I think gone are the days where you can be an engineer, where you just put your head down and mm -hmm. you just code and you don't think create, uh, creatively. The reality is artists have been using technology for a long time. Engineers have been creative. I yeah. think the idea here is that it's going to become even more important as we go along when some of this, like, and you see a lot of these artists now, they're, like, embracing this, and they're saying, actually, you know what? I'm going to have my first cut of the beat, my first cut of the lyrics. I'm going to give that to AI, see what it comes up with. And then I work on top of that as opposed to just trying to bang it out all myself. So it yeah. starts to look at AI as, like, a way to collaborate. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It gives you that cutting edge. If, like you just said, if you're a coder or an engineer and you don't think creatively, somebody that does is going to have that up over you. Mm -hmm. And if you're a beat maker and you don't know your technology well enough, yes, you can sit there and do it the old fashioned way. But are you going to get enough done in enough time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it, it can be like a source of inspiration. Yeah. Right. And if you like, look at a lot of producers, like. You watch what they do. They spend a lot of time just going, mm, no, yeah, yep. that's not my beat. No, that's not the one. And they click and click and click. They spend hours just like listening to beats. Yeah. What if they could just like say like, this is the type of thing I'm talking about. Like you just get their idea yeah. and it that's just comes crazy. out. You know what I mean? It made me yeah. think about like when I'm in my production mode or the process of trying to create a beat, sometimes there's a certain sound I'm looking for. Mm. And I know like, okay, maybe it's a woodwind. But to be able to narrow it down, mm -hmm. instead of going through all of my entire database of sounds, it can be frustrating. So you know what's crazy? So Google's actually developing what's called what music LLM, mm -hmm. where you could start mm -hmm. like prompting and generating some of those wow. sounds. So if you figure you want this woodwind beat, that beat, we need this in beat, on that. Just we go ahead and generate it. You <laughs> know, right? yeah. and um, and yeah, that's 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 the world. I mean, it's here right now, but. Still need to rule some of the stuff out responsibly, but yeah, that's 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 uh, that, that's the exciting thing I like about not only with technology, but that we're bridging something that connects us to us, which is music. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And to add on to Calvin's point, um, at the event at the hackathon, we're actually going to have uh, a demonstration of what we did with Lupe Fiasco. Mm. So Lupe worked with the team at Google mm -hmm. um, on a project called TexFX where it was automatically generating different words he could use in his flow or different themes. Wow. And he was like, based, fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like that, we're going to have the engineer that worked on that. He's going to oh, do a nice. demo with us. And uh, we're trying to, we'll, we'll see what else we can work into the event. But that's, uh, that's one of the cool things for a show, AI with rap. So. Yeah. So this is a pretty big deal. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds it like a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're really excited about it. And, uh, and you know, this is just a start. We're, this is still super early days. Yeah. You know, you can think if this was, the, this was like the internet in like 1990. You yeah. Know? It's exactly. It's like super yeah. early days. That's what we've been trying to express to people. Like this is still just the, the beginnings of everything that they kind of been like, oh, it's here. Like nah, it is, but it isn't. It's still right. on its way of really coming into fruition and, and really being a thing. Which leads me to a question. Yeah. Uh, are you guys going to keep it STEM or are you going to build an app and let it go commercial? I was going to ask that mm. too. I'm sorry. That's mm -hmm. good. No, well, like mine. <laughs> yeah, so when you say keep it STEM, like what? what, what? Like keep it, like teaching STEM in, in, the cl in classrooms mm -hmm. and teaching kids and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and young adults or 
making a commercial where you know the, the guy that's fifty that wants a hobby in his ba- in his in his right. uh, garage, he yeah. can just open up on his phone or in his on his laptop. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so that the the whole idea, one thing that Calvin and I are founding now um, is a nonprofit called Break Me Code Inc. And so the whole idea here is we're just getting this out to as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. So, and we stop thinking about like, well, this is only for t- students between this age and that age. We're actually finding a really good example of this. Um, like we've been so focused on like the high school students, but then we heard people say, well, actually these younger students want this as well. Mm-hmm. So we started to see that already happening naturally. And then we had the World Food Program in the Middle East. Mm. They came to us and they said, you know, we actually want to teach refugees. And these are adult oh, learners. Yes. And like we want to get them excited to learn how to code. Yes. And we're like, well, this is not our focus area, but you know what? We'll train your trainers. Okay. So we taught their teachers and then they said, and we said, all right, tell us how it goes. And then they came back and they're like, you guys changed lives. You have no idea. Because wow. we started teaching like thousands of people yeah. how to code. And like that got them on a path to then go, okay, now I'm going to get a certification. Yeah. Now I'm going to get, now I'm going to become an IT specialist. And so that was really, really exciting to see. Um, another example, one of our first coaches, we taught that coach how to teach Python in the class. And uh, in six months later, he started his own company using his skills in nice. Python. He like just, just learned as a coach. Because nice. one of the things is like one great way to learn is to teach other people. So what we hope actually is that people are going to join who are actually our older, older students you might look at opportunities to say like, you know what, maybe I'll start by trying to coach my kids or coach my local community. Yeah. 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 I'm just, oh, just thinking beautiful. that like that's mom beautiful. and dad sit down, learn this with your child, make it a little family educational. Night. Yeah. yeah. I exactly. like it. This is why tech is only going to get exponentially bigger yes. and faster because it's just going to spread like wildfire. Everybody's going to have a, common base of it and if you don't have that you're gonna get left behind mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that's why we do this yeah so is. let's remind everybody of when the hackathon is yeah yeah so, those. yeah so it's december 16th it is 11 a.m to 3 p.m eastern time so new york time and they can join at breakbeatco.de slash wbls Well, we definitely appreciate you both for stopping through, talking about this revolutionary platform that I think is amazing. Um, And we may have you stop by again in the future if you guys want to talk tech with us. You know, I could tell you guys have a lot more in you Mm -hmm. to talk about for sure. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, that's episode five. We'll see you back for episode six. Just Nick. Tat Wizard. Thanks for watching.